Just like at any other school, the start of a recess period here means that someone runs off to buy drinks for the group. Welcome back to some more Gosaya. We're going to be picking up where we left off. Yuji was having a interesting introspective about his life, wondering if he deserves to live an ordinary life in such a unordinary school. So, I really like that conversation. I'm curious to see if he'll get an answer to that question. There was a similar system at my previous school, so the event itself is familiar. The fact that our designated gopher puts on a maid uniform for the task, on the other hand, is still going to take some getting used to. So, なんかいつも悪いわね。あ、じゃあ私は冷たい緑茶で。いえ、自分の分を買いに行くついでですから。天音さんは冷たい緑茶ですね。かしこまりました。じゃあ、私はミルクティーね。はい、みちるさまはミ
I don't know. Makina was saying some interesting things on the baseball field. What was that girl even worse when she arrived here? Anyone has a thing or two in their past they don't want others to know about. I would say most people have more than one or two things, but maybe one or two big things. If you're attending a school like this, merely touching on the subject is probably enough to make uh, some old wounds ache. Seems to be an established principle of mutual restraint when it comes to these sore spots. The conversation shifts fairly smoothly away from the details. そう、最近はお豆腐も食べるようになったじゃない。豆腐ほら、この子ってばひどい変色化でしょ。気に入ったものしか食べないって言うか、果物とパンしか食べないような子だったのに、最近は何でも食べるようになったじゃない。I mean, I think that happens just in life. I didn't grow up eating salad at all. And now I actually like salad. I actually like lettuce. That's like something that's happened in my, you know, later 20s that I had no interest in when I was younger. So, I mean, your, your tastes change. <laughs> Having favorite foods is fine, but don't reject something you haven't tried. At least eat some before you decide to hate it. Experience is the most useful possible form of knowledge, a precious privilege reserved for those who manage to stay alive. Sometimes most instructive and memorable lessons all come from the deaths of your comrades. But I wasn't trying to preach to Makita or make any complicated argument about her values. I just want to get across that ignorance isn't something you should cling to proudly. You're only embarrassing yourself when you insist that you hate some food you've never eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is it worse to imitate Yuji or, or one of the other girls? Because they're quite quirky. For example. It's clearly Yumiko. You're blaming Watashi? No. Makina seems to be coming off as a little arrogant lately. Better watch your step, got it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ポジティブな面を考慮すれば何でもかんでも抑えつけるのは良くないと思うけど。<笑> You would have to show some better habits for her to imitate them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Problems with the sample she's working off of, to be honest. Look at that, we've been such a great influence. Damn. 
それどういうことかな学びなさいよ私からもツンデレとか何のためにっていうか何のとこがちょっ素でポカンとしながら私の生き様ま全否定するのやめてもらえる大丈夫ちゃんとチルチルからも学んでるのよ反面教師として何をそれやっぱあんた私のことバカにしてんでしょ well, wouldn't be untrue. うんでも好きはあチルチルのこと大好きだよだから大丈夫あうそうなんかよくわかんないけどうんそうなのどう散々んんバカにしておいて最後に「好き」って言って全部チャラにすんのこれってツンデレあんたやっぱムカつく<笑>えでも好きなのは嘘じゃないのよチルチル一緒にいると面白いしバカだけど Now that I think about it, is there a lot of stories where two tsundere's fall in love with each other? I, I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I feel like usually both characters will have a different personality. Maybe like opposites, you know, because opposites attract. But I know there was that comic that was going around about two yandere's falling in love with each other. So, like, is there one about two tsundere's? I think that would be quite interesting. Both being kind of. Cold to each other, but warming up to each other eventually. Oh, sorry, this car. So, the yoga is a star. Do my little But can you imagine another me true? Huh. Break's already over. Oh, such a mosoy one, eh? Nanika, Torabu de Mata no Casira. I don't know. We overloaded her with information about. Non carbonated water and milk. Then, what's the meat of a hino de vanacta? Oh, mm. Oh, Sacha, Ima, do coni, you know? He? Hecky no homer? Nanny stay no so not a good day. Huh? Cocaido? Non de? Chotto chotto chotto, he got a shibolita de doga, so come at the shinai de ekara. Uh, she went to go get fresh milk, didn't she? Nanka Sacha, it's about who she gave you ten year to Kaite, who Kaido Made, Jibun de Gunu, she bought the Kurute. Oh no, she's gonna milk a cow herself. One's devotion knows no limits. Tony Kaku, he must have the Modotic Te, huh? Koki no Chiketo? Son no Kuseki much to Kashinai de Ekara. Okay, I think I might have been right about this one. Akina's personality getting warped might have been inevitable considering references she's working from here. Well, not to say I'm any exception. So, we're not going to see uh, Sachi at all today. <laughs> She's all the way in Hokkaido <laughs> getting milk. What an idiot. <laughs> like, and, and I say that lovingly. I'm not, I'm not saying she's really stupid. I'm, I'm saying she, she's an idiot in a loving way. Because <laughs> she is. I love her. She's great. I'd assume the job of a principal mainly involved counting your school's money, then begging for more. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's what a principal does, but okay. That and signing off on paperwork you haven't really read. That one might be true. Judging from the way Ichizuru has the free time to call me and to chat for no particular reason, even going so far as to make the tea personally, my guess may have not been that far off the mark. Well, even if it's the truth of the matter, pointing it out would no doubt hurt the woman's self-esteem. A good man knows when to keep things to himself, as my master put it. Not in the least. Not what I meant, I don't know. It sort of feels like I'm playing a student for some undercover operation. Can't quite settle down. So? Well, I won't deny that, but sometimes I'll catch a glimpse of myself smiling in a pane of glass and just flinch. 
It's like I'm looking at someone else. It feels awkward. I just want to ask that guy, what's so funny, asshole? Who do you think you are? And before I know it, the smile's falling right off my face. So you know? All right, here's a simple analogy. You know when you're having sex in a hotel and you look at yourself going at it in the mirror and you're just like, what are you, a monkey? The whole thing seems ridiculous, right? Same deal. How much experience do you have doing that? <laughs> really? Okay then, let's try this one. The guy I knew told me a story about the time his parents caught him fucking a pillow in the middle of the night. In that moment, cursing his idiocy, he longed for the release of death. I think that sense of shame might be somewhat similar. <laughs> Wasn't rape. He had the pillow's consent. <laughs> what are we talking about right now? So you could talk to Titan Janakdene. I guess it was a turning point in his life, decided that if he was going to kill himself anyways, he might as well die defending his country. Uh, how many people in the military are in there? Just because they would probably kill themselves otherwise. That's a sad thought. Feel free. <sighs> Hopefully they didn't say anything about pillows. They've all got their own circumstances, huh? Figured as much. I did gather that, though. They do seem like a bunch of oddballs. そもそも... この学園が設立されたりゅうもその辺の事情が少なからず関係しているわ。この学園に学生が6人しかいないのもまずはテスト部活に手を出すこともできないようなデリケートな事情を抱えた子もいれば、ことが公にな事情を来たす子もいます。例えばあなたのようにね。I like how there was like a delay in like the next part of the dialogue. 学園の方針としては、学生の自助努力というか。問題を抱えた学生を集めることによって学生同士で心のケアを行い自然治癒力を高めるというかそういう言い方は語弊がありますが you throw a bunch of losers together and hope to lick each other's wounds そういう言い方は語弊がありますあくまでも上からの押さえつけではなく学生同士のつながりに重点を置いた教育を目指しているのであって this kind of sounds like you're getting people that have personal issues in their life, maybe trauma. People that maybe would have a hard time making friends otherwise and kind of putting them in an environment where they're faced with other people that are similar to them. And that will probably help them make friends. Sounds pr pretty when you put it that way, but basically you gathered a bunch of rich kids that couldn't handle regular school. Raked in a ton of donations from people with a guilty conscience about how their children turned out, then made up an excuse about healing in their own time, when no one approved no matter how much money you threw at the problem. I feel like both of them are kind of right. I don't know who's more right, but I feel like both of those could be solid explanations. I I'd like to think there might be even more to it, though. Talking about private capital here, so there's a certain degree of flexibility with their funds. I don't know if I click something or if she just cut off, but like this popped up after she was done talking. Yeah, let's stop talking about money. Whether I'm right or not, this is just going to lead to a lot of outraged self-defense. Wherever the money is coming from is covering my free tuition, so I hardly have the right to criticize. 
I do wonder though, is it just because their parents are rich can, and can afford to like fund this private school, or is it a matter of that these kids have something special about them? Uh, just going based off what we we heard about Makina with her her memory being able to essentially photograph a page with her mind, like, like that's superhuman to me. Like that's something that many people would not have the ability to do. Most normal people would. You wouldn't be normal if you could do that. Let's just say that. Uh, so I wonder if, if everyone here is very talented, if there is a bigger, more grand purpose for what they're doing here. Maybe they don't need a formal education. They need something different than the norm. Why did you call me here in the first place? And sorry, to continue my thought, my question is though, if everybody here is super talented, what is our place in this school? What What is our purpose for being here? Obviously, we're a very talented soldier. I, I don't, I definitely think we're older than everybody else here. At least that's how it comes off. I feel like we have more life experience. Um, but I also think that we ourselves are pretty talented. So I'm just wondering, where does Yuji fit in with all of this? Are we here on the guise of being a student, but trying to kind of lead them in a way? Kind of like a teacher would? I'm not sure. I have a lot of questions and they keep... They keep feeding me a small spoonful of information at a time that gives me just more questions. I said there's no real problems, just can't get used to this yet. With some more than others, as you know, I'm not the most sociable human being, and thanks to my master's influence, I got a bit of sarcastic streak. It does lead to some misunderstandings. I do I do say Yuji is kind of like a, a teacher figure, but at the same time, I do acknowledge that he is just as much of a student as all the other girls. Because he he does fit like that kind of not uh, he fits in by not fitting in. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, he's saying I'm not the most sociable human being. Everybody here seems to have a little bit of trouble socially. They're not the norm. So he does fit in perfectly in that sense. I do sense that Yuji <laughs> doesn't necessarily fit in with with everybody. I guess you could say I've run into some minor communication problems. What do you expect in a school that's founded to collect warped people and fix them? Or maybe to sweep them under the rug, whichever. Beating the flaws out of a warped sheet of iron, gathering the failed works and stuffing them in a dark closet. This place is more like a metal shop than a school. I think Yuji likes to overanalyze things. I, I do think there is something here to analyze, though. I do think that this school is unusual. There's plenty of other schools that, that could cater to kids like this, right? But if they're so separated from society like this, I don't know. There's got to be something more to it. Can I just tell you I have some issues with communication? I guess you might have been hoping that adding a truly twisted individual like myself would upset the others warping and get them back on track, but apparently it hasn't worked out too well. Gratitude towards the person who saved your life, is it? So you could. Okay, so we saved the principal's life at some point, is what I'm assuming that's saying. It's a coincidence that was the one who saved you. Okay. That was acting in orders. Just something you arbitrarily convinced yourself of. Not to repeat myself, I didn't save you for any special reason. Okay, 
それとも何か別のお礼が良かったかしら何言ったもらえないな確かにあなたの思っていた普通の学園とは少し違うかもしれないしクラスメートに変わった子が多いのは認めるけれど I'm wondering when Beast was playing through this part I have not I, I, I have watched a little bit of his playthrough like at parts that I've already gone through of course、uh, I wonder if he was <laughs> was mad that he said that because I know he loves like teachers <laughs> so that's all I could think of when she said that Not a problem. Not that I buy every word coming out of the principal's mouth, but when you get down to it, a place like this is probably just about right for someone with circumstances like mine. Tossing the likes of me into a run of the mill school wasn't a great idea to begin with. Pushing my way into a crowd of people with completely different values probably would have made for a tense and irritating experience. Alright then, are we done here? Yeah, so, ne. Nanika humanga at the rates de might de. すべて例えば。Sakaki, huh? I haven't known her for that long, and honestly, I can't say that I have a particularly firm read on her. To be perfectly frank, this is the woman who started slashing. We have a box cutter out of nowhere. I can't say I'm too eager to get deeply involved with her. Alright, these are just my impressions. If you put it nicely, she's a rational type that doesn't waste her time. Put it harshly, she's just apathetic. Unless it's blocking her away, the girl's not going to bother picking up something that falls down. That's how she comes off, at least. Applies to relationships with others as well. Sakaki seems to avoid getting involved with someone unless she absolutely has to. She'll respond when you talk to her, but rarely joins the conversation otherwise. I guess we could interpret her quietness as an attempt to avoid hostility or attempts at intimacy from others. But I think it's partly that she doesn't simply understand how to build relationships of mutual trust. And if someone else tries to bridge the gap, she'll take it as an intrusion on her territory and violently reject them. I think those are the major points. I've been consciously trying not to be too pushy and intrusive on her, but well, I haven't gotten far, that far. Major, huh? That girl's nuts. The other day I saw her wandering around the door, always moaning with a cling wrap rolled around her head. What kind of ritual is that supposed to be? <laughs> Contacting the mothership. <laughs> I see. I like how the principal explains it so clearly, yet all of, the, all of our classmates made a big deal about it. Like, it was so strange. The time I hit it myself distinctively and observed Mikuru's, Michiru's freakish ceremony from afar, but it seems she wasn't wrapping full and I had to protect from a cult mind control race after it all. Incidentally, is that hair color allowed by the school regulations? I love that that's like a really big thing in Japan about having a normal hair color. They even like make you dye your hair at some points, you know, to like fall in line. But then, like every anime you see, the protagonist always has some bright colored hair. Like, they always have some unnatural hair color, like pink or, or yellow or even blue. True enough, it seems like、uh, she has her reasons for going with that hair color, too. I guess there's no need to force her to stop. Do you mean me? I wonder if she. And I don't really know too much about the reason why she's a tsundere. I feel like we. We talked about that and I, I just don't really remember. But I wonder if it's because she doesn't feel comfortable with herself. She said I'm a tsundere, so it has to be this way, but I don't know any more than that. Okay, to sum the girl up, she's a genu generally incompetent human being. Though you might get distracted by the flashy blonde hair at first, it's not representative of who she really is. That coloration is actually a warning signal. By going out of her way to be highly visible, she's announcing to everyone 
who sees her that I'm poisonous, but then is nothing more than an empty threat. What is she, a dart frog? In other words, Mitra is so weak that she feels the need to project hollow menace and self-defense. The girl wouldn't last a minute on her own. She has to form symbiotic relationships to survive. She's also counterproductively cautious around others, and she has a hard time trusting their charity or affection. In that sense, Sachi is a unique presence in Mitra's life. If you ask me, Mitra might be trying to figure out just how selfish can I be before Sachi rejects me by slowly pushing at the limits of her kindness. <sighs> But for the record, these are just my opinions based on what I've seen of Mitru, so I might be completely off base. People do call me perceptive sometimes. When you grow up nervously watching the expressions on other people's faces, you naturally pick up a habit of observing others. That sounds like anxiety. So, as she speaks, Principal Tachibana takes a binder stuffed with documents for her desk and begins flipping through the contents. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Um, so I have, I have a singular daughter. I don't have any other kids. Uh, she doesn't have anybody necessarily to look up to to learn boundaries or to to pick up on on things quickly uh so i feel like her pacing compared to some other kids is a little bit slower um she's still kind of learning to talk you know consistently uh still trying to learn to to potty train her you know she's almost three years old um th there's things like that, that as a parent i i notice and i compare to other kids and say oh my kid is behind and I, I worry about that as a father, right? Uh, whereas I, I look at some of these other kids and have to step back and realize these other kids have an older sibling to look look up to. And you know what happens when you have that other sibling that's like, you know, hopefully not too far in age? You start picking up on it quicker. You look to them for how to do things in life. So yes, I, I absolutely agree with this. They do learn quicker they get observational skills and they pick up on things faster when they have an example that they see as a peer, you know, because they don't look up to to their parents as peers. They look up to their siblings who are more closer in age. Well, sorry, that was my my little fatherly rant right there. Not the only reason in my case. So <laughs> Sachi, eh? On the surface, she's just insanely serious about everything. Kind of an awkward girl. I think she believes diligent obedience is her only redeeming feature. I could make just generic observations about why a character would be like that. Why would someone be just very diligently obedient? Uh, I think... One thing that comes to mind is a fear of rejection. Uh, you don't want people to dislike you. Um, so by just doing everything and giving in to them, you can just be blindly obedient. And people will just naturally like you. They'll come to depend on you. You'll get this idea that, that they need you in their life. And maybe that's comforting to some people. I think that's a really bad thing to have. Uh, I think a good example was Shuji um, in Sabbath of the Witch. This is kind of how he was before he kind of learned to be his own person and, and have his own individual thoughts instead of just giving into his ability and just helping people with whatever problem they had so he could avoid the consequence of that. I think Sachi could be someone who feels similarly. I don't know. Or maybe she just doesn't know how to live otherwise. I don't know. I'm guessing it gives her some kind of purpose by being obedient and, and having people um, rely on her. It makes her feel included. Could you classify her as a tortoise rather than a hare? But that seems like she's decided that for herself. I guess she's just given up on developing her talents any further. And she is talented. She's developed talents through trying to fulfill what others need. But she's not developing them for herself necessarily. 
These are the type of things about resolving a huge problem over the course of 10 years of hard work. She seems incapable of even considering a search for easier methods, let alone turning to others for help. She told her to build a castle here. She'd start stacking up stones by herself. She's serious, honest, and follows any instructions she's given obediently to the point where she often seems more like a robot than a human being. Uh, if we really want to go there too, abuse can do that to you. You don't want to get beat up for you know going out of line so you learn to just follow instructions and not ask questions but i don't know if it's quite that extreme girl's faithful to her order she doesn't think about efficiency when carrying them out it's almost like she's punishing herself if someone doesn't teach the girl to let off some steam she's gonna explode someday mm -hmm. <laughs> If Dengan Ropa has taught me anything, uh, the characters that seem really obedient and just go along with things usually have ulterior motives. <laughs> I not to fall into the mistake of thinking I've created an appropriate setting so now I can just leave the students to take care of themselves. I don't think there's anything wrong with being dependable like Sachi is. Um, but at the same time, it's good to take time to yourself. It's not selfish to, to have your own um, your own hobbies and, and to spend time, you know, doing things that you enjoy sometimes. There, there's definitely a balance of time, right? Um, but you know, it's, it's okay to do your own thing sometimes. I want to know, so you're taking regular feedback, but what have you changed? Was was bringing us to the school your idea of something that would ch change the dynamic? What other things have you implemented? So you've had this sort of discussion with others as well. Yes, yes. That's a good alternative. I like that. Iris. Yeah, that's who I was thinking too. I'm like, I'm trying to think, who would want to draw a picture instead of talking about it? あの子の言葉は少し理解するのが難しいし、話をしている最中に何を話そうとしていたのか忘れてしまうようなことが多いから。Did you mention food? 思い立ったことを紙に記録したものを提出してもらっているの。あの子、結構絵が上手だから面白いわよ。I see. Yeah, in Makino's case, I think a diary would probably be more coherent. あなたイリスさんと随分仲良くなったみたいね。all I can think about is the school seems kind of like like a big therapy session in a way but like I said I do think that all the girls and even Yuji himself um, have some kind of tr trauma or, or, or something that uh, affects them to this day in their past so when she mentioned uh having her draw a picture, I, I just thought back to when I was younger, uh, I had lost my grandma, and, and one of the things the therapist tried to do, because I was only 10, um, is, is tried to get me to draw, and drawing was something that I loved to do when I was really young, uh, and at some point, through failure, I just got really insecure about it. Uh, I just compared myself to other people who drew better than me. And I learned to just dislike drawing completely, and I, I stopped doing it. Um, not to say that I was, I was really ever good or had a talent for it, but I did like to draw. And uh, so, uh, sorry, I, I just kind of thought of a therapy session I went to where they suggested drawing something, and I was like not really on board with that. When they told me the same thing. あなた、どうやって彼女と仲良くなったの? Piece of cake just helped her get the hang of masturbation with a little hands-on instruction. Hey, yo! 
What, Yuji? Hold on. Now she comes by my room every night. Too far, my guy. It's a joke. Don't give me that look. If you ask me, Maki is the kind of the exact opposite of Mitri. She plays up her own weakness to take advantage of the protection of others, like her bizarre speech patterns and quirky habits. Regardless of the way she comes up to people, all that I think it's something she does by instinct to invite compassion from the strong. Sort of trick works uh, on many men, but it's not going to make her popular with her own sex. Wouldn't be surprised if she'd be bullied as a result. The reason Maki has taken Omani so much is probably because of Omani's unusually strong protective instinct. I think Omani's large body and oddly masculine parts of her personality are also a factor. <laughs> if you want Maki to like you, communicate that you don't intend her any harm, then demonstrate that you're strong. She'll slide up to you herself. A little bit manipulative, kind of playing on, on weaknesses of hers. Don't know about that. It's a fact that I don't dislike Makina, and she herself understands perfectly well that I've seen through her. The fact is, Makina is much smarter than she lets on. No, I actually really like the relationship between Eugenie and Makina. I I've said this many times before. That's not what I'm saying. For one thing, it's not like I always. Uh, I can't always be around to protect her. And if you're completely convinced that someone's going to keep you safe at all times, you'll turn into the sort of person who can't do anything in a real emergency. Mana is enough if she wants someone to spoil and protect her. I'm trying to convey the value of independence and self-defense. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I just had a random thought pop in my head and I want to say it before I forget it. I would love to see uh, a story where the main character tries to actually change the whole of Japan. Uh, the anime that came to mind, and I, I think it was an anime originally, I don't know if there was another source of material. Um, but the anime that came to mind was Eden of the East. I think Eden of the East had such a great premise with like trying to change the whole of Japan and um, and and seeing the chaos that kind of resulted from that, like what lengths people were willing to go to do that. Uh, I, I highly recommend that show. I think it's it's really unique. It's, it's something I've never seen anything else like it. Uh, so I would love to see more stories of someone like trying to to take the country and trying to change the world. I guess Code Geass would be another example of that. Um, maybe not on a grand of a scale, you know? <laughs> but, like, just trying to change the nation nation out of, like, the goodness of your heart. But maybe, like, seeing the consequences and what you have to do to, to accomplish something at that scale. Sorry, I don't know why that, that popped in my head. Gosh, she's the biggest mystery to me. Uh, her painfully cheerful personality and burning need to help others are one thing. I have no idea why she clings to me so persistently. Uh, I could give my interpretation of this one, too. I think it's uh, out of a fear of abandonment. I think whenever people are really clingy and, um, and very emotional, that usually tells me that there's a fear of abandonment down there. Maybe they're used to feeling disposable with like their parents or their friends. Maybe they don't feel like they're really included as much as they, they want to be. So they become overly clingy. They kind of assert themselves to where they can't be pushed away. If Suosan herself said it was love at first sight, how did you find that out? Did we Did we mention that? That's what I don't understand. She see me walk by and your first thought is going to be that's a suspicious character. She's saying she fell in love with me at the first sight. She might be the most deranged of all of them. I don't have an answer, so let me ask you instead. What kind of woman is she?
I don't really believe that, though. I don't think anybody here is as they seem on the outside. I think everybody has different sides to them. I feel like, in a way, we're kind of getting the the customer service side of people. Um, if you know, if you work in retail, you kind of put on a persona when you're there, you know, because you have to be nice. You, you kind of project a, a side of you that isn't real because you know the side of you you would see as somebody at, who works at a store, you know, versus how they would be in their normal everyday life. It, they're two different people. And that's kind of how I feel like we've gotten from everybody here. I definitely feel like there's another side when we really like see people become vulnerable. We'll really get to see um, the real them. And we've gotten glimpses. Absolutely. We've gotten glimpses, especially of Machina. We've seen her kind of um, become a little bit more vulnerable. I think even uh, Amane to a certain degree. Still waiting maybe on the rest of them. This will flip quickly through the documents she's holding. You know, you shouldn't give away a woman's age like that, pretty cool. Okay, so how many years older uh, than me are you, Chizuru? What's the matter? You've inexplicably broken in a sweat. Damn, hitting us with the deflection, huh? Let me ask you about that. I thought Japan had their own biker gang, too. Like, that's always a kind of stereotype there with, like, the Yakuza or something. I mean, biker gangs. It's not just America. I don't know. Hearing her come in and uh, <laughs> in a motorcycle gives me a different impression of her now. Get the picture. Guess we go up on the age thing. I do wonder how old Jizuru is. I don't feel like she is that much older. Probably in her 20s. Can't make any guarantees, but I'll put in the effort. Are we done here? Alright then, I'll be going. I can't quite get used to my life at this school. I was being perfectly honest when I told you zero that my own smile feels awkward to me. Normal student life in a normal school, it's hard for me to believe how readily I'm accepting these small fragments of happiness. Or maybe, right, maybe it's hard for me to forgive. I don't think I'm really feeling awkward when I see that smile and feeling guilt. Feels like a foul gas gathering in my body, like my blood's turning black and vicious in my veins. A stifling sensation as my lungs are slowly filling with cold poison. Look, you. Do you really think this is what you should be doing right now? Vague and patient questions dominate my mind. I feel pressing need to do something, anything, but no concrete course of action presents itself. Sorry, I, I was reading this because this is how I've kind of felt in life right now. I had a very good conversation with my wife last night. We were both kind of feeling that we we moved to a new place uh, and we've been here, you know, I don't know, close to two years now. And quite frankly, it's been a terrible idea. <laughs> we we discovered some things about ourselves Um just like kind of health wise and that's been like a positive thing even though it's kind of made our lives harder um i won't i won't mention what my wife did but um i found out that i i have celiac disease which means i i can't do gluten and things like that so i can't do wheat barley um and, and other things i have to worry about oats of all things so i found out that about myself and everything else kind of hasn't fallen into place other than that like that's been the only thing that that was positive since we moved here we moved here to be closer to family and just nothing has really worked out i feel this pressing need to do something anything with no concrete course of action presents itself kind of resonates with me so 
Sorry, I know, I know I'm being vague, but that's just kind of how I felt in life right now, and I felt that way on and off throughout life a lot, and maybe some of you guys do too. Principal tells me I'll get used to this soon, but what good would that do even if I could? And it's like, I don't want to get used to feeling like that. That's not a good feeling to get used to, like, feeling this, like, I need to be doing more, I know I can be doing more, and I just don't have a, a path forward. That's, that's frustrating. No matter how I change, none of these things I've lost are ever coming back. In the field, interpersonal relationships resemble the interlocking of pieces in a puzzle. In order to form a coherent larger picture, the players fix every piece into its place. Move according to their instructions, take the position they designate for me, and carry out the tasks they assign to me. In many cases, the players prepare a number of spare pieces as insurance against the unexpected. Pieces in question realize they're expendable and are prepared for the possibility they might be used as sacrifices. I always hated watching people as they were sent to their deaths, but I also understood the rules of the game we were playing. Pawns aren't allowed to move on their own selfish impulses. The first priority is always to win. That's what I hate about war, though. I, I hate the idea of war, that people are just pawns, and, and eventually somebody gets what they want, or they, they end up giving up, and then that's how a war ends, you know? It, it, it's just terrible all around. Probably because I spent so long in that sort of world, but friendship has become a mostly theoretical concept for me. Word rings a little hollow to my ears. I think a good example of that was uh, the No Game No Life movie. That, that kind of showed just how like pointless and how many people like died to establish peace. It's, it's just stupid to me, and especially if you think about Depending on when you're watching this video, if you're watching it as I'm as I upload it, there's a lot of kind of small wars going on right now, and it just seems so pointless to me that people would would sacrifice lives for for such small reasons. Not to say that I'm skeptical of its existence, but to me it seems almost like something out of a magic show. Show me two people swearing, "We'll be friends forever," and I see Sun TV psychic bending a spoon. Makes me want to pull back the curtain they set up around their feelings to see what's really going on there. How that trick really works. She got the vitamin C drink. As usual, Mitru is gulping down the bitter, soft drink to maintain her vitamin C intake. She's that determined to keep up this absurd daily dose when taking supplements to be more efficient. Her pills that contain daily supplies of a wide range of vitamins. The ideal would be to get everything you need from your meals, but that would involve eating buckets of vegetables daily, which isn't easy to keep up. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, since I had that whole experience, you know, with the scene of her <laughs> drinking so much juice and then getting sick, and I got sick right after that, I went out and bought um, a new multivitamin that I could take each day, and I bought vitamin C pills that I've also been trying to take every day. <laughs> I guess in a weird way, this has inspired me to, like, kind of try to keep up my health better um i just already know i'm kind of immunocompromised I, I just mentioned that not too long ago i found out i had celiac disease and that's an autoimmune thing um, and i'm sure i have other things i don't even know about but i just know that my immune system is not great and that's something i've learned in the past you know year or so so i i did take that to heart when she's like yeah i've been taking a ton of vitamin c and that's why i'm healthier i've been i've been trying to do that whether this worked or not, um, I'm not sure. My, my family did get sick recently, actually, after I got sick. Not not with the same stuff, and I didn't get sick from that, so maybe, maybe it worked. Not a great idea to become completely dependent on pills for your nutrients, but I don't think there's any problem with using them that complement your diet. My diet's just trash, I can tell you that. I, I don't eat good, okay? I eat a lot of rice, I eat pizza, I, I don't eat good, so I absolutely need to supplement. <laughs> Incidentally, me true. Oh, bless you. I don't know if you guys heard that, but my cat was... He's been sleeping on my lap while I'm playing, and she just sneezed pretty aggressively. The stalker. I don't need to take supplements. What? You want to keep up a regular vitamin C intake, but don't like sour things. Wouldn't it be easier just to take a multivitamin tablet? Mm -hmm. 
What the? Hmm, Naga, I'm asking you a question. Why do you torture yourself by drinking this stuff when there's an alternative? Are you going to tell me it's better absorbed in a liquid form? Okay, so she told me exactly what I thought she was going to say. <laughs> I don't think that's wrong. Well, certainly in the water. I don't know, though. Is vitamin C something you can have in excess? I know different vitamins, like some are stored in fat, some of them, like uh, B12, I believe you will pee that out if you have excess. Like, you'll that's why your pee will turn, like, highlight or yellow if you have too much vitamin B. You're saying your body's composed of dry sand? <laughs> so you're tricking your body into thinking it really needs it. So you're you're using the sensation of, of thirst to try to trick your body into absorbing more of it. Because you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm drinking something, I'm getting what I need, so I'm going to absorb everything because I... I feel like I desperately need it right now. Oh no. <laughs> she hasn't. I feel like Mitra of all the cast has so many different, like, ways to describe her or, like, nicknames. Like, she's the alien. <laughs> Apparently, she's the rice goddess now. The feeling you'd end up in an infinite loop if I left you going here. At least it's not like the Haruhi Endless Eight. <laughs> Nothing can top that. <laughs> All hail the rice goddess. <laughs> Michiru takes out an airtight plastic bag filled with powder. Not that I didn't have her down as a drug trafficker. This is pretty suspicious any way you look at it. What's that, heroin? So, so, heroin, heroin. Oh my god. そしてトロトロっとしてきたところを注射器でポンプして中に吸い込んで。then you just have to find the local McDonald's bathroom. Oh, I'm, a bit... <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned with how much in detail that she knows about this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. Just looking at Vitria's face. She's like, what the hell is going on? That was very much playing along. Uh, are you trying to kill her? Isn't vitamin A something that's really easy to overdose on? 
これはビタミン C は U に及ばず世界中の酸っぱいものを集め何時間も煮詰めて作ったミチルのためのスペシャルコナンさあ酸っぱいうちに召し上がれ Because I'm, I'm thinking of like the liver of a polar bear. Is, is it the liver? That, is that right?、Uh, anyways, it's some part of the polar bear. I'm assuming it's the liver, but it might be something else. If you eat that, there's so much vitamin A in there, it's so concentrated, it'll just kill you. Which is crazy. I can't think of a lot of animals that you would eat their liver and like there's too much concentration in there, but. <laughs> I do know that vitamin A is something you don't want to take too much of. So you've had the chance to challenge the sour so the sour dropped in your lap. Might as well give it a shot. <laughs> a veto, eh? Alright, you don't have to try it. I'll have a go instead. Sour things tend to be good for you after all. Well, except the taste. When the taste is a result of something going rotten. Ani, you didn't grind up spoiled meat to make this, right? What did you grind up? I'll try it. It's a time to watch, Amana. You understand me, true? If you're not going to take this, I will. Here goes. <laughs> She had to read the script. She's like, wait a minute, what would a tsundere do right now? Nishio suddenly snatches the plastic bag out of my hands and pulls off the twist side of sealing it shut. Try too hard to play the tsundere, and you'll end up as nothing more than a predictable contrarian. Nichu pours the stuff in the bag into her mouth, gulping it all down as though it were anti acid powder. It reminds me of the time that I took like a whole spoonful of like pink Himalayan salt to impress a girl. <sighs> Not a smart idea, guys. That's too much salt. Here you go. I fast made sure the 100% vitamin C drink she'd been working on earlier. <laughs> I mean, you did say any drink. It was the closest thing I had on hand. We're just literally torturing Mitru right now. Oh no. Because we hate you, apparently. ああ、確かに言ってましたよね。でもね、伝達の順番をね、よく考えていこうよ、みんなで。これからね、将来に向けてさ。<笑> I see, I have no idea why you're so stubborn about not using supplements, but if that's your way of doing things, I'll keep my opinions to myself. Foods to avoid. You talking about the superstition where certain combinations of dishes supposedly cause some terrible side effect? It's mostly just a bunch of old wives' tales. 
なの私はまあ食べ合わせなんて気にしてないけどねグレープフルーツだってもちゃもちゃ食べちゃうし Sour stuff. I guess they clash with salty things. The bad combinations would probably be stuff like eel or pickled plums. Supposedly, you get pretty severe indigestion. Yeah, there's definitely like vitamins that compete for absorption. So if you take both of them at once, you'll probably get a lesser effect of each. It'll kind of. Cancel each other out in a way. As far as like food combinations that don't go well together, I gotta say the one I remember as a child was root beer and cornbread. They they don't go together. I think the wisdom of the ancients is all well and good, but I wouldn't get too hung up on myths like that. Even famous legends about durian fruit and alcohol causing some fatal reaction turned out to be a load of crap. Why are you asking in the first place? Planning to start cooking? So so you look at all my kid. なんでもないわよ私は食べ合わせなんて気にしないおてんばガールってことよあ、スパイシーロー。おてんばガール<笑> ?Of course, Makina chose to enter at that exact moment. くらなんじゃくらやっぱりチルチルは電波を受信したり宇宙と更新したりしてるのよさ。Me true, the alien. そんなことしてるか食べ合わせそんなに気になる健康面を気にしてのこと気にならない気にしてたから聞いたんじゃないのあにゃ、違うそうじゃないのです What's wrong? Your syndrome is starting to fade き、消えてないわよふん、そういうのはね、いちいち指摘しなくても平気よなぜなら、大抵そうなった時は自分でもわかって私はこれはすなんだからね。私はこれはすなんだからね。皆さんのおすすめです。ヘロインパーティーですか？What?それはもう終わったわよ。Wait the hell? Zachi, were you here for that? Yeah, その言い方はご弊が。あのね、パーティーなんかじゃないわよ。もしそうなら由美子もいるはずでしょう。私は仲間外れが嫌いなのよ。それもそうですねとなると榊さんはまたお一人で読書でしょうかうーん榊さんってちょっと距離を感じるわよね仲が悪いとかそういうことじゃないんだけどそうかしら私はもうハロー由美子今日も元気にしてるでもあんたの健康なんて気にしてないんだからねってな具合でバッチリ挨拶できるわよ Okay. Oh, that's funny. So who does Sakaki spend the most time with then? So you are a little Muzukashina. What does she want? Makina no Mendo, Mitter Kotoga, Oikido. So no, no, you saw. It's my money, Uekara Stamade at the Moratino. Atasua, such an Yojo Tonomo Kotoga, Oikasrone. So this, eh? QK Shio Kana, to you timing the Michir Samaganika or Sharade Kotoga, Oikis. Demo, Hatarai Tiru Tokiwa. Dang, let the girl have a break. Makina is a popular one. Makina is a popular one. Makina is a popular one. しかと。何よ、その言い方。失礼しちゃうわね。ミチル様、冷静になった上でその現実を受け入れてください。ミチル様は人気がない。Bro, what did Sachi become a savage? え、Sachi? 
I don't know if anybody's been following with all the drama with rappers lately. I've been enjoying listening to some of the clever lines they come up with to like diss each other. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, I know is involved. Uh, Drake. There's there's quite a few people I think that are kind of involved. Apparently, even the weekend got involved. I don't know. I don't really care too much about them personally, but I've been enjoying listening to some of the raps and some of the ways they kind of clap back at each other. Gosh, everybody just roasting Michiru. Not to worry, Michiru, you can always make friends inside your head, they'll never reject you. <laughs> Mitra's reaction to my attempt at the joke isn't quite what I expected. She's staring wide-eyed at me, waiting on tenter hooks for more details. Take a deep breath and politely begin to explain. The most common term would be my, uh, would be imaginary friend. It's a fictional companion that lives solely in your imagination, pretty typical in childhood. Some people only make one, some people dream of a whole cast of characters. Though they usually drop the idea as they grow up, I've had some people keep their imaginary friends around even into adulthood. I feel like that's schizophrenia. Imaginary friend. Let me try to listen carefully to my every word. It seems like it doesn't seem like uh, it doesn't seem to have been what she was looking for. Her shoulders sag in disappointment. Guess some people have long conversations with their dolls or stuffed animals instead. I don't I don't want to hear that from Amane though I I remember what happened in our bed okay you seem like the type to get caught up in fantasies that a fact so what's reality the way you see it Mitra folds her arms and closes her eyes. After a long moment of thought, she stands up straight and delivers her answer. Okay. Didn't even have a dramatic delivery. Mitra must have thought that was a really impressive line. Suddenly, her audience is less than responsive. There's a moment of awkward silence. This reminds me of a recent conversation I had in Discord where uh, we had a, a friend who was wrong about something and they ended up just like doubling down and all the all the while they just kept defending themselves and we were just kind of roasting them and having fun and then everybody just kind of laughed about it at the end but <laughs> that's what i feel like's going on right now Bro, what <laughs> What is Sashi on today? She is just ripping into Michiru. Gosh, I've just never seen a side of Sashi like this. Can you define metaphysical? You've disappointed me. I'm making a note not to expect anything from you in the future. Not that I've been previously, but I clearly need to lower my forecast even further. <laughs> from this moment forward, I'll be formally handling you, you as an authentic, officially certified idiot. Oh, <laughs> Hoach 
I feel like this conversation's just gotten stupider and stupider by the minute. As a kid, my friends, A. Eh? Hmm? Those words bring to mind a young girl I met under some very unusual circumstances. Our relationship was basically about helping each other stay alive, but I guess you could have called it a sort of friendship. And after a while, she disappeared from that place, and I was left to defend for myself again. Tricky question, I'm not the most socially gifted person around. So? I'm not playing on the concept of friends, so I decided to mentally substitute the term buddies. I think I can provide more concrete answers about the teammates I've known on the field. I'll pass on anyone who holds me back. The useless ones don't have any right to complain if they did end up getting shot in the back. Just a figure of speech, nobody's actually going to shoot an ally, but you should try to learn when you can count on, who you can count on to watch your back, and who you can't expect anything from, and how to deal with the latter. Anyways, I like people who are easy to work with. I guess that's really the only thing I'm looking for, to be honest. As long as they don't get in my way, I'm not going to complain. Maybe. Sometimes I think tools make better partners than human beings. They have a clear purpose, you know? Makes them a lot simpler to deal with. Didn't mean to imply that I'm just saying that tools tend to be reliable. Once you've had a piece of once you've used a piece of machinery enough, it'll practically become a part of you. A simple extension of your body that does what you need. The more affection you give a tool, the more smoothly it operates. A tool won't betray you. Not often at least. So I got a bit off track there. To put it more simply, I don't think I've ever really had something you could call a best friend. We've been discussing friendship for a while now, now that the concept has got, not that the concept has gotten any clearer for me. At this point I realize that one person has stopped participating in the conversation. A certain bottle blonde has slowly taken her distance from the group in our friendly chat. Face growing increasingly gloomy, her usual energies vanished, wonder if something's wrong. I mean, you guys were just non-stop roasting her the entire time. I mean, for most people, they're gonna get their feelings hurt. Like, I don't know if they're just trying to play around, but even playing around, like, just from my experience in my own friend groups, when you just constantly, like, go at somebody like that, they're just gonna get offended. She's an idiot. Wouldn't be surprised if she ate food off the ground and found herself in intestinal distress. Just I can easily imagine the girl stuffing her cheeks with unidentified berries she found some bush. Take a good, careful look at me, True. Mm, indeed. This is the face of someone who goes scavenging in trash cans once she gets a little hungry. No, my mistake, she probably doesn't even have to be hungry in the first place. I can picture her plucking some tasty-looking colorful mushroom off the ground and chowing down without a second thought. Mentally feeble are such a handful. So, Anta. After she wandered down to the beach, spotted a crab, chased after it while drooling to found herself under attack from a jealous, uh... <sighs> I don't even know what- I don't even know how to pronounce that. Coveting the same prize. This woman have no sense whatsoever when it comes to her hunting and gathering. Just entering a wild monkey's territory is dangerous. What kind of fool goes so far as to try to steal their prey? Kind of think of crab eating, uh. Makay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't even live in Japan. Did this girl wander all the way to the Southeast Asia in search of something tasty to stick in her craw? This is just too much. I have to say something. I hope they jump off the sofa and drop my hands on Mitra's shoulders. Everyone flinches in surprise, I pay no mind to their stares, I gaze up firmly, focus on Mitra as I speak. It's Amaboic dysentery, I'm sure of it. Don't worry, I have some experience with this. You were bitten by a crab eating my 
Oh my gosh, he keeps saying the word. I just, I, I don't want to try to pronounce it and just be even more wrong. Probably Tin McCulk? I'm trying to learn from this experience. Stop scavenging for food for the time being. Don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing you for the thought. After all, procuring food for your environment is the most crucial and fundamental of survival skills. I'm very proud of you for trying, okay? Not said your particular actions in this case were mistaken. You acted rashly out of ignorance, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. I'll make sure this doesn't happen again, and... Let me turn to face the rest of the group and raise my voice to a harsh shout. Let me just warn the rest of you right now. You don't have any right to look down on Mitra just because she's caught. Emma Bogues, dysentery. dysentery. This could have happened to any one of you. We're going to learn from this mistake. You're all going to know what plants are edible, which are poisonous, and how to avoid savage monkeys. I don't want you crying for me to help. Uh, crying to me for help when the Japanese islands are covered in jungle. No. No. Uh, we're just going off one of our autistic rants. All right, then. First things first, I'll be accompanying Mitri for the moment. Come on, we're going to the bathroom. I need to get a look to confirm my diagnosis. Scavenging for food, right? Hence the infection. What's with the sweating? Your face is pasty and you've got nasty beads of perspiration on your forehead. You sure don't look healthy to me. Mane watching me true and in me with concern enters the conversation. Not in the least, she's suffering from brutal diarrhea. Demo,そういえばさっきから少し苦しそう。大丈夫？大丈夫よ。なんてことないんだからね。<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, don't have dysentery, you need to properly identify the problem. Whatever infectious disease you've caught, you need to take the appropriate countermeasures, understood? Mm. <laughs> Infirmary that doesn't even have anybody there manning it. Not necessary, Sachi. There's a possibility she's still infectious, so probably more experienced in this sort of thing than you. <laughs> My gosh, you guys are all idiots. Come on, let's go. Listen, Megan, how many times do I have to tell you not to make light of dysentery? The small things are what you get you. You change your socks regularly when you're in Vietnam, and you always treat diarrhea with the proper respect. You're awfully stubborn, but anyways, the illness sure came out of nowhere. You looked fine until we started talking about best friends or whatever it was. Mitra's mm. face fills with pain, and she clutches a hand to her chest. In the next moment, she's leaning heavily against the walls, and to keep herself from falling to the ground. What's wrong? Are you in pain? Mm. Wait, is it your chest rather than your stomach? Please, <laughs> Hmm. Normally, chest pain is something we should be responding to immediately, but it seems this is a fairly familiar occurrence for Michiru. She has the most information, so for the moment, I'll have to trust her judgment. Alright, if you say so, but don't overdo it. If it feels worse than usual, let me know right away. You have a heart condition? You've got guts, Tsundere. Bumping herself lightly in the back, Mitru slowly settles her ragged breathing down in time. The beads of sweat on her forehead disappear, and the expression of pain on her face fades away. I see. I tend not to trust sick people when they tell me I'll be fine as a general rule, but I guess sometimes the person in question does know best. So you're low on iron. I don't think anemia typically causes chest pain. もし今後こういうことがあっても軽くするんしなさいよね。そ、それとあんまりこういう姿他の子に見せたくないから黙ってなさいよ。Got a chronic illness would be best if the people around you knew enough to react appropriately in an emergency. If you're opposed to the idea, we can write a memo and stick it on your forehead. もう私が黙ってなさいって言ったら黙ってなさいよね。わ、わかった。He insists. 
みんなミチル様のお帰りよさっきのはただの貧血心配しなくていいのよあれもう戻ってきたの元気になってよかったのよさ当たり前じゃない私を誰だと思ってるのツンデレキングミチル様よ Oh gosh, she has another title. So we got Rice Goddess, the Alien, and Sundere King. And I think there was one or two others. I just can't even remember at this point. She's just collecting them by this point. Sachi, if you want to tell me about it, I'll give you some water. I'm so sorry. I'm going to give you some natural mineral water. Yes, I'm going to give you some water. もどってきたとたにそっちゃにめいれなんてすっかりげんきになったみたいねそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそ